and welcome back to my channel. It's Ashley here and if you are new, hey girl, hey. So in this video today, I'm gonna be sharing the process of building one of the house beds slash Montessori beds. As you can see, this is a very old video. It is literally winter time when we got this built and it is definitely pre-COVID. But I wanted to get this video up for you guys for everyone who is interested or has been thinking about building one of these beds. Right now, as you can see, we are in Lowe's and we're picking out all of the wood that we need for this build. And I will have the supply list here on the side, but I'm also gonna have the plan that I used and our alternate plans that we kind of made for our bed down below in the description box. So I was super excited to put this video together because I honestly, when I wanted to build this bed, was looking for a good tutorial to kind of help me with this process and I really couldn't find the best one. So I hope this video that I have put together for you today is going to be a very nice visual way to learn how to build this bed and a very nice, easy to follow tutorial. So let's get started with this process. All right, so it is day 14 of this project. It's like I'm kidding, it's not day 14, but it's been a couple of days since we bought that wood and now a plane is coming over, so hold on one second. <laughs> okay, so today I am going to be just separating the wood and then I'm going to cut down the sizes that I need. Don't worry, I'm gonna have all the cut sizes down below. I'm also probably just gonna put them here on the screen so that you will know the cut sizes. So let's get started with cutting. All the wood is nicely separated. So I got my two by fours here, my two by threes are over here, my one by threes in the middle there, and then my one by twos. So let's get started cutting. Okay, so here is my cut list. So I have my two by fours, two by threes, one by threes, and we're not gonna be cutting the one by twos. Um, so this is how many I should have after each cut and these so wrong so these are supposed to be opposing angles um on just this particular piece of wood and then this one's supposed to be just a 45 degree cut at one end so the arrow shouldn't even be there but you don't even really have to worry about this this is just going to be the piece of paper that i'm going to have beside my miter saw so i can be making sure i'm getting my cuts correct the one thing you're going to need is measuring tape so i love this it's a self-locking measuring tape and i'll have it linked down below if you don't have a self-locking one this is amazing i love it because like it just like self-locks itself so anyways, let's go. Okay, so I'm gonna have the cut list here on the side real quick just to pop it up here. And then I'm going to be going through each individual cut frame by frame. So for my first cut, I'm gonna take one of my two by fours and I am going to cut it down to 38 and 3 4 inches. And I'm gonna be doing a cross cut and I'm going to have two separate pieces after this. The next cut is also going to be from a two by four and I'm going to cut this down to 76 and three fourths. Again, another cross cut and I will have two separate pieces. All right, so for this next cut, you should be cutting your two by threes, but I accidentally cut my one by threes, um, but your two by threes are going to be cut at a 45 degree angle at one end and they should be cut down to 47 and one half inch, and you should have four separate pieces. All right, so moving along, I am now using the correct size, which is my two by threes, and I'm going to cut these down to 33 and one fourth inch, and with these, you should have opposing 45 degree angles at each end, and you're going to have four separate pieces after this. 
The next cut is going to be using your two by threes again. As I said, I'm doing the wrong piece of wood. This is actually a one by three, but it should be a two by three. And you're just going to cut this down to 76 and three fourth inches and you should have three pieces and these are just going to be cross cuts. And the last cuts that you should have are from your one by threes and you're gonna cut these down to 39 and one eighth inch and you should have 15 of these. And then our last pieces of wood that we have, remember, is our one by twos and we're not going to cut those at all. Okay, so after you have all of your pieces cut, from your two by fours, you should have two pieces cut down to 38 and 3 4 inches, and then two pieces cut down to 76 and 3 4 inches. And then for your two by threes, you should have four pieces cut down to 47 and one and a half inch with a 45 degree angle at one end. And then you should have three pieces cut down to 76 and 3 4 inches and then you should have four pieces cut down to 33 and 1 4 inches with opposing 45 degree angles at each end and lastly you should have 15 pieces of your 1 by 3s cut down to 39 and 1 8 inches and the next step of course after cutting all your wood is sanding so I love to use this long lasting sandpaper that I always get from Lowe's and now I'm just going to sand smooth all my pieces and make sure that I don't have any rough edges or anything like that. All right, so after I'm done sanding, I'm going to be using my favorite primer, which is the Bullseye 123 by Zinzer, and I am going to prime all of my pieces of wood, and I did two coats. Today is a day where we put everything together. Um, so I primed the pieces of wood, and they have dried for a full 24 hours, and now I'm just gonna start to pre-drill the holes, and then we're gonna take this upstairs, assemble it, and then I'm going to paint it the final color. To create my pocket holes, I'm gonna be using my Craig Jig, and I am going to be creating the pocket holes for my two by four pieces outside, and then the rest of them, we're gonna do them up in the room. So I am just keeping this at a one fourth inch depth for when I drill my hole in there. And then also you wanna make sure that you are drilling the pocket holes on the inner portion of your wood and not the outer portion of your wood. Right, so now we're about to start to assemble the bed and if you can get someone else to help you you are in it to win it you're gonna also need some pocket hole screws that are one and one fourth inch and then also just some regular screws that are also one and one fourth inches to put this bed together so the first thing that we did was we attached the two by fours which basically the two by fours are going to be your bed frame um, we attached that to one of the two by threes that had an angle cut on one end. Okay, so here is where the plans kind of change from the original plans. So we did something totally different than the plans that I'm gonna have linked down below. Um, so first of all, we just had a very, we just had brain farts because we were just like, what is going on here? And we were trying to figure out the angle situation. So it was all totally my fault because I cut everything correctly, but in her instructions, it's literally word instructions and then it's like this random diagram so i'm like I, I i need more visuals than this and i didn't have it so anyways your angle should be flipped the opposite way and we had it 
facing technically it's facing inward but it's not pointing inward and in her instructions she does clearly say pointing inward and i just was very frustrated and i wasn't paying that part attention so you want to make sure that that part that's sticking up and you just have that one angle at the end that that piece is flipping is flipped outward and your angle is pointing inward so that your opposing angle pieces will be able to fit together perfectly and then you can screw everything together but since we didn't do it that way and we were just what is going on i have no idea what we were thinking about y'all but it was crazy um we just decided to cut the um angle off and then attach it that way just have a straight angle a cross cut instead of an angle for the post that's sticking up okay so after we got our little angle situation fixed i'm now going to be adding some pocket holes to the two by fours that we cut at 76 and 3 4 inches and we're going to add that horizontally to the top on both sides so basically this two by three that is cut at 76 and 3 4 inches is going to match up exactly with your bed frame part. That two by four you cut down to a 76 and 3 4 inch size as well. So that is your side piece. And then your front and back piece is the two by fours that is the 38 and 3 4 inch pieces. And this is what it looks like when you have all of those pieces attached together. So now we're gonna start to work on the top of the house bed. So the part that's gonna come together to create the triangle at the top of the bed. So of course, um, we switched ours, so <laughs> it's completely different from the plans that's down below. So you can either do the plans down below or you can do it the way that we're doing here. Either way, you're gonna come out with an amazing bed. So we have our angles, we're gonna keep the bottom angles at the 45 degree, but then instead of having um, angles at the top, I'm just gonna go out and make a cross cut of those and then they're gonna fit flush together. And of course, one side is going to be longer than the other, so what I cut these down to, I will have those measurements down below and I'll even probably just pop them up here on the screen. All right, so now I'm gonna create more pocket holes to the inner portion of the wood here. So we'll be able to attach the top piece this way. And I'm gonna do that for all four of the corners. Now to attach the top two pieces together, we're going to add more pocket holes and we are going to attach them that way. You just wanna make sure that your longer piece of wood is going to be on top of the shorter piece of wood. Next, we are going to attach our third piece that was cut to 76 and 3 4 inches, which is the two by three, and this is going to be the roof. So I am just creating pocket holes, and I'm going to put pocket holes on both ends, and then we are going to place this on top, and then I'm gonna screw those holes in, and then we will have a roof. All right, so the next day I just came back up here and I painted the bed. So the four pieces that I recut, I primed those first and I let them dry. And then after that, I came in and painted it Sherwin. I painted it Sherwin Williams. <laughs> I painted it White Cottage um, by Sherwin Williams. And then where I had my pocket holes, I just took a smaller paintbrush and I painted those areas in. Just so when we move, it's just gonna be easier to just take those screws out and disassemble the bed. Okay, so later that evening, we came back up and we started to work on the support part of the bed for the mattress. So the one by two pieces are going to basically be your side runners for the bed. And to attach them, we, use corner brackets so i picked up some corner brackets and we drilled our holes and we added those screws to both of the one by two pieces so after we double teamed these one by twos and got the brackets attached to the bottom we then attached them to the sides of the bed 
And the first thing that I did was I just took a pin and marked where I need to drill the holes. And then after that, I drilled my holes and we attached these pieces to the side of the bed, just making sure that it was in the middle. thing that was done was adding the one by threes that are basically our mattress support slats and to attach these to the top I literally just was placing them down um, if you want to be precise you can measure it out and then place them but I just did it by the eye and placed them um, on the top of the one by twos and then I took my drill bit and I actually had the countersink bits and I drilled the holes, so we like alternated. I was drilling the holes. We actually didn't alternate. I was just basically drilling the holes and then he was adding the screws in and that cut the time in half. So again, if you have someone that can help you with this, get some help. <laughs> so um, that was it. And these countersink screws, um, I got them from Walmart. They were the Heart brand. So if you go into the tool section, you can find them there. Um, I was gonna order some off Amazon, but I just found these in Walmart and I picked them up and they worked perfectly. All right, so here it is, the end result of this bed. I absolutely love this bed. It really has helped with Riley's independence so she can get in and out of the bed on her own. She's even starting to try to make up the bed as well, which is amazing. Um, she's been in this bed for about five or six months now and she loves it. So this is actually one of the DIYs that I did for Riley's room makeover and I have a couple more to do. So make sure you stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure you click on that subscribe button. I'm obsessed with this. Don't think that you cannot make this bed because you definitely can. It's a very easy build once you get all your cuts done. It's also less expensive than buying it out of the store. So I highly recommend that you try this out if you are thinking about it. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you comment down below to let me know what you think. Make sure you have that notification bell clicked so you'll always be up to date with my latest videos and I will see you in my next one. Bye.